Welcome everybody, I'm Andrea Miller and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator at Community Hospitals and Wellness Centers in Bryan. I'd like to welcome our live audience and viewers at home to live it wrapped and ready to roll. So today we're going to be making two different wraps. Um, one is actually not so much of a wrap, but we're going to wrap it around delicious ingredients. Um, we're actually going to be making, it's kind of like a crepe, um, and it's it's a, a great recipe because it's very simple. It's only two ingredients. Now both of these recipes, even though they're wraps and one of them is more like a tortilla, neither one of them require any rolling. We're just gonna make two batters, pour them in a nonstick skillet and roll with it. So anyway, I ended up bringing my own nonstick skillet today because it's very important that you have a good nonstick skillet because these wraps will stick to your skillet if it is not thoroughly nonstick. So I didn't want to be messing with a skillet that I wasn't familiar with, so I brought my own. It's actually a wok, but you just need a good nonstick surface um, and preferably one that you can kind of roll around a little bit. So anyway, we're gonna get started. The first one we're gonna make is a spinach tortilla. Um, and it's just, so one, two, three, basically four ingredients. Um, and you need a blender to make this. And we're gonna be using a couple different ingredients today. The first one we're using, and actually this is our um, sample or our uh, giveaway that everybody in our audience gets to take home with them. It is um, tapioca flour or tapioca starch. I wish I would have had a little bit more time to experiment with this recipe because I really think cornstarch could work as well. Um, the recipe specified that arrowroot flour also worked, um, but we'll get back to you on whether cornstarch may work too. But all of our audience members get to take that home. You need a third of a cup of it. And I'm just gonna kind of level it off and I, so I have one, one third cup measuring cup here. I'm just gonna pour that directly into the blender and then I'm gonna use the same measuring cup to measure out my flour. And today I'm using garbanzo bean or chickpea flour. But, um, and I'd, I'd highly recommend using that because garbanzo bean flour is a great source of protein and fiber. Um, but I have, I did a couple trials at home and actually I used whole wheat flour and that worked well as well. So you could probably experiment with nearly any flour if you don't wanna go out and buy um, garbanzo bean flour. So I'm using one cup of this. So I'm gonna measure it out three times. Set those aside. These two flowers might be hard to find. Um, as you can see, I get a lot of my specialty ingredients on um, an online grocery store called Thrive Market. Um, you could also get them on Amazon. Um, you may be able to find some of them locally as well. Um, like I said, I believe cornstarch would work and whole wheat flour, so those are things that you would be pretty readily available at the grocery store. And then I'm gonna use about two ounces of spinach. You can also use kale in this as well. Really any leafy green and just, you know, a good, good handful in there. Um, so, and then water and a pinch of salt. So I'm gonna do a little bit of salt in there to give it some flavor. And I'm gonna add about a cup of water which I have a little more than a cup in here because you may need a tad more depending on how thick you want your tortillas, which I like them pretty thin, actually. So that's about a cup. I'm just gonna do a little splash extra. So you need about a cup to a cup and a quarter. I'm gonna give it a blend and then see how thick it is. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get my skillet heating. two little leaves in here that are near the top and I don't want them near the top. There we go. <clears throat> 
All right, and you can see how nice and beautifully green it turned from the spinach being blended in there. Okay, my skillet's hot. So this recipe makes approximately six tortillas. You can make them however big you want them. I'm gonna give it a little spritz of cooking spray. Turn the heat down a little bit. Seems like it's pretty hot, so this is kind of, the burner's kind of difficult to control. Um, so now, actually, let's look and see how thick it is. So we'll give it a try. Okay, so I poured a little bit in my skillet, and then I'm just gonna kind of twirl it around in a circle, just to spread the batter out a little bit. And then set it back down on the burner. And you just have to wait until it's all cooked through. So in the center right now, it looks a little bit glossy. So you wanna make sure all of the glossiness is gone. And it looks pretty well dry. This is a very scientific way of holding my pan so you can see it in there. See it? Oops, fall right out. <laughs> It's ready to flip. <laughs> this is a great nonstick skillet. So just cook it on both sides for a couple of seconds. So while this is cooking, so the spinach wraps that you buy in the store um, you know, why not just use those? Well, you certainly could, you know, if that's something that you enjoy, it's not going to make or break your diet, that's for sure. But don't count on that as a serving of vegetables. I actually took a look at the ingredients and the spinach is actually not spinach, it's spinach powder and it's listed as a spice or a seasoning. So you're not getting a whole heck of a lot of spinach that way. All right, so I'm just gonna dump that onto the plate and then just kind of keep going. So this one I think I'm going to try to make a little bit bigger. It seems like the right consistency to me. And again, just kind of give it a twirl. And then just let it cook. And while I'm doing that, I'll read the ingredients to you of the store-bought spinach tortilla. It has enriched bleached flour, so just white flour with all the nutrients stripped from it and then added back in with basically a multivitamin, so not the best for us. Um, water, vegetable shortening, which is a blend of intersterified and hydrogenated soybean oils, so that's not probably great for us either. Um, and then the seasoning, so again, that's where we find our spinach powder, onion powder, spices, and things like that. And then, of course, it has all the leavening agents and preservatives and, and that type of thing. And all of that comes in at about 220 calories and 38 grams of carbohydrate. <clears throat> so one-sixth of this recipe has about 83 calories. So we're cutting down quite a bit on the calories there. Um, and the carb was right about 15 for one sixth of this recipe. So um, not only are we saving in calories and carbohydrate, but there, that looks better. Usually the first one is kind of a little sketchy. The second one comes out better. Um, but we're saving in you know ingredients too. We're using better quality ingredients. And a lot of times when I'm working with my patients, it's not so much, the quantity that they're eating, it's the quality of our, their diet. So quality is really important when it comes to nutrition, trying to get more better for you foods into your diet. So instead of spinach powder, we actually put a handful of spinach into these wraps and we're using less processed ingredients. And again, it's not too difficult to do this. So of course it does take a little bit more time and effort but sometimes it's worth it. We'll do one more and then we'll get started on our next one. A little bit, make it a little bigger. Now, as you can see, I did give it a spray with cooking spray when I first started. I haven't actually added any more 
It's kind of a, a preference, a judgment call, whether you want to use any cooking spray or not. Um, at home, I just use like a, a misto type thing where I just have olive oil like in a spritz bottle and I'll just give it a quick spritz before I get started. <clears throat> So we're just gonna set, well, we'll set this over here. And we're gonna get started with our next one real quick. So our next one, and I always forget to add the salt, so I'm gonna do that before I forget. I'm just gonna make it right in a glass uh, measuring cup, and I'm gonna take a banana. So if you know me at all, you know that I love black bananas because you can do so many darn things with them. <laughs> rather than throwing them in the trash can. Um, this is pretty much what I use for sugar at home. Of course, sometimes I use real sugar as well, but you know, you can add sweetness to so many things with a good old ripe banana. So I'm gonna cut that in half and put that on in. This is ready to flip here. <clears throat> and the other ingredient we're using is eggs. So just three raw eggs right in with our banana. We're going to blend it up, and that's our batter. So really, really simple. I'm going to let that cook another second and flip it before I crack my eggs and get my eggs, get the eggs on my hands. All right. So as you can see, it should just slide right out of the pan. No fuss with this recipe. All right. here. So just cracking three eggs right into the measuring cup with the banana. And I'm just going to remove these gloves and put on a fresh pair. So we don't cross contaminate anything with our raw eggs. And then I like to, you could use a fork to mash this. I like to use my handy dandy immersion blender. It just makes life so much easier. That looks good. And then I am going to give it just another quick spritz here. And pour the batter right in. Again, you, you don't want to make these too big, but you want to make sure it's a manageable size to flip. And again, I just kind of like to spread the batter out a little bit by just kind of tilting the pan. And then you just let it cook. So while it's cooking, I'm gonna get started chopping up some ingredients. Um, the first one is some fresh tomatoes. So. You know, what do you do with these wraps? What do you fill them with? Um, first of all, anything you want. Um, with the savory spinach wraps, obviously I like to keep it savory. Um, today we're gonna do like a Greek wrap and we're going to fill it with um, some hummus, feta cheese, and then cucumbers and tomatoes. Um, but really anything goes. You could do like a Mexican inspired, you know, type of dish. Um, you could do, you know, just like your typical cold meat wraps, um, you know, whatever you would put in a, a tortilla wrap or a tortilla, um, you know, anything like that would be fine. So you can see the edges are starting to brown a little bit, but the middle's still not set. This one you want to be careful not to flip it before um, it's completely set in the middle um, because it will kind of tear. 
you just want just the right amount of heat. So as you can see, I'm controlling it by taking it off the griddle because this heat, uh, heat source is a little bit more difficult to control. Um, this portable one then, you know, mine is at home. Put it off for a sec. Okay, so carefully get your spatula under there and give it a quick flip. So this one, I mean, it's, so it, you can tell that it's brown on the other side, and that's okay. It's not burnt. Um, I found with these, you kind of have to get them a little bit more brown um, in order to get them flipped on the other side. Turn my heat back on. And again, just a quick, you know, quick second on the other side is enough. So there's our banana crepe. We'll do another one of those. And then what would you fill a banana crepe with? So today, to get a little protein, but some sweetness in there as well, we're just using cottage cheese and um, a jam. And we're just using a store-bought jam today just for ease. Um, but I would highly recommend, a couple months ago, we did the very berry chia seed jam. And I would highly recommend using that in these crepes. Um, I have young kids, of course, you know, at home, and um, I, my middle son absolutely loves Nutella. No, Nutella is not great for you, but a little bit of Nutella goes a long way, and it's absolutely delicious with some fresh berries or bananas or something like that in these crepes as well. Of course, you could do like peanut butter, bananas, and honey. Um, Ricotta cheese instead of cottage cheese would be really great too. Um, I do a ricotta cheese actually for more of a savory dish, but I put lemon zest in it. So like a like a ricotta cheese with lemon zest and a little bit of honey would be um, really good. Honestly, what are what do people in our audience? Does anybody eat crepes? Nobody eats crepes. I, okay, so <laughs> I was also thinking some, some more of my ideas. Um, this fall, um, apples would be delicious. Like a cooked apple would be delicious in a crepe. Cinnamon apples, um, you know, those types of things. This is going to be a sweeter crepe. I know that, you know, obviously it has banana in it. And like I said, I use bananas as sugar. Sometimes people do like more savory types of crepes. Um, I would try, I would stick with the sweet um, sweet crepes for these recipes. This is a very, very dull, oh, I broke it. Maybe not, I broke some of it. So this one does take a little bit of patience. I should have maybe left it a little bit thicker. It's all right. The first one turned out pretty well. So the nice thing about these is they can be refrigerated and reheated. Um, they can also be frozen. So um, I'm gonna make another one a little bit thicker, but you could store them in your, in your freezer and reheat them in the microwave. Um, so, you know, it, it, they can be convenient. You don't have to do them all, you know, the day you want to eat them. Um, eating healthy becomes more convenient if you plan ahead. Um, so if you if you say, okay, well, I'm going to make these spinach tortillas. It's not that you know not that hard to make a spinach tortilla on my own, and then I'm going to stock my freezer with them. So on busy days, you know, I can grab one out of the freezer, um, pop it in the microwave, reheat it, and then fill it and go. Um, so. You know, now if I was trying to do that this morning when I'm trying to get all my kids ready to go to the babysitters, and that's not going to happen. So eating healthy, a big part of it is planning ahead. So 
which is not always easy because it seems like we're all crazy in our everyday lives and it's hard to find that time. But if you can find the time to do things like this, make extra and again, store them in your, in your refrigerator or freezer. I wouldn't keep these more than like three days in your refrigerator. They kind, the quality kind of, you know, isn't as great, but in the freezer, you can keep them for a lot longer. So this one's looking better. Struggling with this one today. The, tor the spinach tortilla is definitely easier. Anyway, you get the idea. Like I said, the first one came out really well, so we're, we'll, we'll stop there. Um, so we'll turn this off. Um, so again, um, today with our savory tortillas, we're just doing some tomatoes and cucumber. I'm just gonna slice a few tomatoes and some cucumber. Let me make another one of those real quick. That one's embarrassing. <laughs> we'll just forget about that one. <laughs> we'll go back to these. I am going to fill one of these real quick. So what I would do for a spinach wrap, I have some hummus here. And I actually, I like a lot of hummus because it gives it a lot of flavor. And it kind of holds it together as well. And then I'm going to do some feta cheese. This is one of my favorite um, little wraps to do because it, it has, it, you know, it's a good source of protein, uh, but it's also completely plant-based. I'm going to slice up a little bit of cucumber. and sprinkle that in there, as well as a few tomatoes. And just wrap it up like you would a normal, so you can see it wrap it up just like you would a normal wrap. Oops, it's falling out. And you're ready to go. This is ready to flip. And again with the spinach, the egg tortilla, or crepe. Just a bit of cottage cheese. And some jam on the it's inside. And I think in a recipe online, we kind of fold it into a square. But you can fold it however you like best. And again, you're good to go. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me today for Live It Wrapped and Rolled. Um, hope you find the confidence to go home and try out some of these recipes um, and figure out your own toppings or fillings to roll them with. So thanks for joining me again. We look forward to seeing you next time on Live It.